I got a report this week that I'm excited to share with you, and I want to tell you about how one of my patients has done the impossible. According to conventional medicine, it is impossible to reverse atherosclerosis or thickening of the blood vessels, um, and it's so impossible that numerous drugs have been studied, and time and time again, they've fallen short. And I am excited to tell you that I have proof of atherosclerosis reduction, or plaque buildup reduction, specifically in the carotid arteries, the, the arteries that run on either side of your neck, and I'm gonna share this result with you. Now, of course, this is just one patient. It doesn't take the place of numerous studies or anything like that, I'm not suggesting it. But I wanna tell you that this guy did it without drugs. He didn't take a single statin. He's never taken any drug. He's used only supplements and lifestyle modifications to not only reduce his risk, but reverse disease. So we're gonna go through it for a second. Uh, my name's Dr. Philip Oob. I'm a functional medicine doctor here in Austin, Texas, and I'm gonna tell you about this patient. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm not using this to to toot my own horn or anything. This guy is a brand new patient to me. I had never seen him before. He's done all this work on his own with some of his other physicians, and he's coming for uh, kind of another take, um, more, more holistic, more functional approach on what he's going through. So um, this is not what I've done. This is what this patient has done. So he's a 65-year-old male. He's a successful guy, has run a business for a long time, um, needless to say, a lot of stressors, um, didn't take care of himself quite so well in his younger years, and now um, he was having some cholesterol markers elevated, inflammatory markers elevated, so he really began working on his diet um, and lifestyle, and he's been tracking these numbers. He's got a spreadsheet that he can pull out for you and show you everything that's happened over time, and his numbers still are not perfect. They're, they're great. Um, but they're still not perfect and by, by conventional medical standards he needs to be on a statin in order to make those numbers perfect in order to um, manage his, his, his atherosclerosis. But this guy is not only managing his atherosclerosis, he's actually anti-aging. He's actually going backwards in his age. So let me explain to you what this report is, first of all. So this is what we call a CIMT, or Carotid Intima Media Thickness Test. And what they do is they look at both your right and left carotids, uh, carotid arteries, and they measure the thickness of the wall. And that thickness of the wall tells you about how old you are according to this graph. So they check a lot of different people, and then they'd plot your, your dots on the graph, and they'd say, well, most people are the red or blue lines, one's male, one's female, I forget, uh, probably male is higher. And, um, and so your dot is way up here, so you're older than other people, at your blood vessels are older than you at that age. And so that's saying that you've got more atherosclerosis than you should per your age, and of course none of us want any atherosclerosis, so we want thin intima medias. Now, part of the problem with this test is, um, one, you're, you're measuring millimeters, and so there's a little bit of variation that can happen just between the ultrasound techs, but also we're measuring tiny, tiny amounts of thickness changes inside the carotid arteries. This can't be done in the heart, it can't be done in the brain, it can't be done in the kidneys, it can only be done in the carotid, and the main reason why is because this is the biggest blood vessel that's the closest to the skin possible. So nowadays with the technology and the ultrasound, they can get really precise with their measurements on, this, uh, on the thickness, and that's how we come up with these graphs over time. So that is a carotid intimate media thickness test or CIMT and basically what they do is they measure the thickness and then they plot you on a graph and give you an age. So we're going to go through this patient in particular. So let me pull it up to where you can see it. So the first time this guy got his lab tested or his carotid checked was November 2012 and he was age 60 at the time and his thickness was so bad that he was um, aged at 82. His blood vessels were that of an 82 year old even though his physical age was 60. So that was, needless to say, an eye-opener for him, time to make some changes. Um, he even had a calcium score at the time, and so he knew he had to make some changes. So he began making those changes. Now, anytime you're making changes to your diet and lifestyle, and you've, you're, you're trying to change atherosclerosis and your risk factors, it takes time. It took him 60 years to damage his body and to do this, so it's not unreasonable to expect years for it to either hold the steady course or reverse the disease. In my book, we're only getting older, so even if he managed to hold his thickness level while his body got older, in my opinion, that's a success. He did that for several years. So from November to December 2013, he actually got older. His blood vessels went from 82 to 85. So is that a statistical variation? Maybe the ultrasound tech measured a little thicker? Who knows, but by the report, it got it got bigger, um, thicker. And then by December 2014, he was back down to where he was last time. Now he's two years older, but his blood vessel age is the same. 
it's 81. And then February 2016, he's 82. And I think that's when he really kicked things into gear to, to optimize his diet and nutrition. And by age 65, his new age is 73. So you can see it at the top right there. So his new blood vessel age is 73. It used to be 82 and now it's 73. So he has officially reversed his atherosclerosis and it is now going back towards normal. Now he may not ever get back to normal and he's not gonna live to be 300 years old or anything. I'm not crazy, but I just like to show this as a point to show that this is effective and this works. Not everyone puts plaque in their carotid artery. So that's one reason why it's not the best test in the world because you can have a heart attack and have perfectly normal, normal carotids. He's one where he is putting plaque in his carotids, so it's a good test to watch. Other people, we have to watch other markers for them. This is his graph that you can see over time. So as the, the dots go forward this way, he's getting older, but you can see that his dots are actually getting younger over time and he's almost back to the standard population, um, the average. Now, of course, we want him to be above average, but we, we may not ever get there. The, the moral of this story is that he did it all without statins, he did it without drugs. And so um, if you're nervous about um, managing your, your cholesterol and your heart attacks, uh, or heart disease risk, I should say, not heart attacks, heart disease risk without medications, you've got reason to do it because you, it's powerful. So the, the standard thing people throw out there is if you put people without heart attacks on statins, you reduce two heart attacks out of 50 people. They claim that's a 30% reduction. Do the math, two out of 50, not a 30% reduction. The reason why they say it's a 30% reduction is because seven people would have ultimately had a heart attack, but by putting all 50 people on a statin, two of them didn't have a heart attack, two out of the seven. So a two out of seven is a 30% reduction. So that's not really um, a 30% reduction. That's just fancy statistics. So by diet and lifestyle, you can actually reduce your risk by 70%. This has been proven time and time again by managing your diet, increasing your exercise, and eating the right foods for your type. Um, and I don't mean blood type, I mean just right foods for your genetics and all that. You can lower your heart attack risk. So the carotid IMT, CIMT is a good test to do if you wanna look at your atherosclerosis thickening. It's by, by no means the only way to, to look at your heart attack risk. I'm gonna do another video that's gonna talk about the different ways to assess the heart, and um, hopefully that will explain some of the different ways that you can actually look at the heart function. Uh, if your doctor's told you that your heart is healthy uh, without doing some of the other testing, there's no real way to know if it really is that healthy unless you do the test. Yeah, you've never had a heart attack, so it must be healthy, but are you gonna wait until you get that heart attack to find out? If you're struggling with your diet, struggling with your exercise, and you need a good motivator, then maybe you should do some of the advanced testing and say, how is my heart? How is it really? Because let me tell you, something will wake you up if you get some bad markers on your heart because you know you need that to survive and there's not really a line waiting to donate um, a new heart to you. So hope this video helps. Stay tuned to my next video to talk more about how to evaluate the heart fully.